Hello everyone, this is Shelby with Shelby Creations and welcome back to the Dragon's Den. As I told you in my last video, we've been doing a lot of renovations and home repairs here at the homestead and basically the two windows on this side and that whole outside wall had to be redone. So for a while, a few months, we could not get in here to do anything. So it was move everything out and then move everything back in and it was in that process of moving back in that I realized what is in my stash my inventory or whatever you want to call it and there's a lot I found that out the hard way so I just wanted to share with you a few of the things that I've come across now I'm one I love going to Goodwill and finding things. Lace shirts is one. And I look and I'll get the ones that have been there for a while. I'll bring them home and I will dismantle them. And what I end up with are some beautiful pieces of lace. I mean, just gorgeous. And depending on how the shirt was sewn, you know, depends on the sizes. Like this was part of a side, and yeah, it's, you know, it's a little un, uneven there, but if I trim that off, I've got a piece for a snippet. And then I've got, maybe I could put that on the bottom of a tag or bottom of a page. But the added bonus to that was there were on this shirt some appliques with little beadworks in the center. So that was a plus. So I got those. I have, and then on the big part, I think this was, this was the back. Look at the edging. Got all of that. And that big piece of lace. All from one shirt that was marked down to 99 cents. 99 cents for all of this lace? To me, that's a bargain. Alright, so that was one part. Another thing is, I used to have placemats on my dining room table and after a while they get grungy and dirty so I washed them and they had the padding in them so they got sort of bunchy because all the paddings sort of separated so I undid the corners one of the corners and took all the padding out so now I've got all this beautiful satin like material for junk journals not bad. But considering that I have one of those plastic three drawer chests, you know, it's on rollers with the drawers, and all three drawers are full. So if I can't squeeze these in, I don't keep them. Hopefully, we're going to try and squeeze them in, along with the lace from the shirt. Another thing, excuse me, because I'm having to come down here into my stash. I keep the things that I have found that I wanted to share with you in a box or rather a fabric bin. Tissue paper. I love working with tissue paper because I like to collage in the, in the junk journals. And to find the floral ones, this was a bonus. Especially this one here. I mean, look at the beautiful flowers on it. And look at the flowers on that one. Really nice. And what I did with some of these was put them in here so they wouldn't get all over the place. I fussy cut some of them out. Well, that one was torn. But some of these were fussy cut. They go on the back of, you can decoupage them on the back of tags, little corners of, the, of your paper. This one was where it was actually folded. I mean, just and that's like free ephemera that you've got all from tissue paper that I had bought for someone's gift so I've got those more tissue paper we put these back in here because if not I'll lose them set those over there another thing I had found that I had collected and we've all seen these when we go to a restaurant Especially since the pandemic hit, 
are the bags that the cutlery comes in. So these you can turn into, I mean, depending on how they're folded, you know, like this, you've got two little, you've got a pocket and, and another pocket. You can turn them into tuck spots, you can turn them into mini journals. Put your paper in there, you know, put your signature in there, and you've got a little mini journal. So many things you can do with them. And so I've been saving them and saving them and saving them. Thing is that all oh, this yeah. This is what I've got left so far. Because I've been using them. So again, part of my stash, my inventory, you know, whatever you want to call your stuff. Bags. And yes, these have the handles, but the paper bags like this are great to do to make the faux leather with those. I save the bags from where I get uh, Amora's heartworm medicine each month. I mean, there goes another you know, pocket journaling spot. Not sure what I'm going to do with this one yet, but I do like, I mean, the paper is, is thick. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I don't want to leave it out of my stash. We all have had the paper lunch box, or lunch bags. These are great for making little small journals that you can tuck in your purse. As you, you know, what I do is I close this part off, so that gives me a pocket. Fold them over, put your holes in here, add your signature, use this as your flap, and that you've also got a pocket there. Or you do it the other way around. Make this your pocket, set your fold different, and use that as part of your flap. You know, different ways you fold things. Then I found that since the pandemic, I've been ordering things online. I think all of us have. And they come in these envelopes. But, and they've got the bubble wrap inside. And I'm so tempted to sit here and, and smush all the bubbles. I've done that with one or two. But these, when they're covered, make a great padded cover for a journal. Another part of my stash. Coffee, coffee dyed rice paper. And yes, other than regular copy paper and cardstock, I use rice paper and straw paper. All of those can go in. This. I mean, listen to that sound. <gasps> I love it. I love the crinkle sound. But this was simply a piece of parchment paper that got wet. No dying to it. It just got wet. Beautiful sound. Now, we've all bought things, um, whether it, it's Hobby Lobby or, or at a department store, where it's breakable and they wrap it up in that, the, the it's not actually tissue paper. But, and it doesn't even feel as thick as copy paper. But they wrap it up in this paper and you bring the paper home. And what are you going to do? Ball it up, throw it away? Not me. I folded, I folded, now my words are sticking together again. Folded it up into squares. I think this was like two or three folds. And cut it all so that, you know, I've got all these different little sheets. Fold it in half, and there's the start of a signature, you know, for a junk journal. More stuff we can put into our inventory. And then the next is envelopes. First time I have ever gotten a bill in a brown envelope. But it's got the windows in it, and I love using the windows. This one here is another one. And just the different sizes of the windows, the different shapes. I love that. And I mean, I can simply tape those the ends down. You can fold it. It can go in the middle of your signature. Say if this was our signature. Open it up here. We can put it right inside there. And there you've got, depending on which way you want to fold it. You know, you've got a, you've got a pocket here plus a window. I mean, that's great. 
So that's part of my stash. But this is all things that I have collected that, that I didn't actually, well, I bought this, the tissue paper, but I bought it for a present. So it, this is really not things that I bought, but things that are the result of what I bought. So those are good. We all have, when you go to an oriental restaurant and they've got the chopsticks, I saved this one because I really like that design on there. And I may take it apart and use the design or I may copy it on into the printer. But I do, I like that. But what I did was I took this idea, because I was sitting there looking at it one day, and thinking that, you know, somewhere in my journal, I'm going to want to put, you know, have a place for a pen. This is a good idea. So I simply took a piece of regular paper, it's a bit thicker than this, and simply made a tube, put the little notch in it here, and in fits my pen. Yes, I made it longer because I don't know what, whether I want to use it for a pen or pencil, but I can always trim that off and glue the end. But when you put this in, and this is from trial and error, when you put it in your journal, only stick your glue or your double-sided sticky tape along the center back. That way it gives, your, it gives you plenty enough room whether you want to put, you know, a thin pen in or, you know, if you've got something a little thicker, even that will fit. So, that was something else that I added to my stash. And this was a result of going to a restaurant. So that's good. Then there are some things that, other things you find around the house. Medical tape. Usually we have these in our first aid kits. And the paper tape, I'm sorry, but it does not stick. It does not hold a bandage on. It doesn't hold the gauze on. I don't know why they sell the stuff. Other than for crafters to get a hold of it. Because you can take your stamp pad and you can stamp it. Put it here on the white part here where you can see. Maybe uh, let's find a a little stamp pad right here. You can take your stamp pad and stamp on it. Oh, I think I pulled that off the other one. You can take your dauber and dye it that way. You can take your little peg stamps. Let's do a heart on this one. And stamp on it. And it is... And then peel it up. And there you've got like instant washi tape. And it works. The only thing is I would suggest you set it aside and let it dry for a little bit because they don't seem to dry very well. Let me find me a wipe here because I don't like, when I use my peg stamps, I don't like leaving them dirty. It takes just a moment to daub it and get it cleaned off. Pull out my paper towel, dry it off, stick it back in my little thing and yes that's all the peg stamps I own right there that's it I didn't go overboard and but I've seen people that have oh so many stamps and I'm wondering how they you know, how they keep track of it all but they do I and you know I'm not saying anything bad about it because I mean I know one crafter who she, special, she does cards. And she may have, I think she has, God, let's just say she has tons of stamps. And I swear she's used every one of them in the past year that I've watched her on her videos. Another type of tape that at one time was medical tape. And it's fabric tape. 
and I mean this stuff now you get it stuck on something it's gonna hold it will hold a bandage it will hold anything and it's hard to I mean, it's a good stick tape and I had this in my first aid kit and uh, because I used to be the medic for local wrestling association and that's what I had to put to hold on um, bandages well I couldn't find it anymore because they've all gone to the paper tape so I couldn't find the one with the cloth well I happened to be in the sporting goods department of Walmart and I found The fabric tape. Only it's not, you know, it's not bandage tape anymore. It's not first aid tape anymore. They've got it, and this, this one has a pink edge, or you can get it with a smooth edge. Instead, it's now called athletic tape. This particular one, which is just like this, came from the Dollar Tree. So now I have plenty. And this is great tape. Put, I put that in my thing. Let's go back to the little thing I have my cutouts in. And I'll show you. When I first made this card, this little flip up, I made it this way. And I, this is the, the fabric tape. And all I did was I took my dauber and daubed it. I think I used the one for that yeah, vintage photo. And then I took the walnut stain and just stamped it. Well, I did this side first and then opened it up to make sure and then found out that, realized that my butterflies were upside down. So I did this, I turned it over and because I really want my butterflies over here, but it doesn't matter. It could be either way. And then I stamped this side with the butterflies in the right way. So it doesn't matter which way you open it or stick it in, yeah, it's still going to be the right way. It's just your butterflies will be upside down. But it doesn't matter. But that tape, and I made this, uh, I think in December. And look how, how that strong that tape is. That is not coming off. And I'm not even going to try to peel it off. Because I tried doing that to one piece and it tore terribly. Another thing we find in our stash is when we when we have our favorite you know, supplier, whether it's Prima, Cartabella, you know, Heidi Swap, when we find an artist that we like their paper collection, we tend to buy that collection whenever we find it. I am so guilty of this. I am a Prima lover. I love Prima paper. I love their flowers. I have got one of those photo keeper boxes that has what 14, 15 or whatever little photo boxes in it. I've got two of them filled with Prima flowers. I'm guilty. Yes, I admit it. But what I did not realize until I had to go through my stash is when you see something and you buy it because of the brand name without actually remembering what you have in your stash. I'll show you the problem. Get it over here. This is the problem. Now granted one of the things I got and yes, I bought these Tuesday morning. This was Poetic Rose by Prima. The little tickets. I thought they were so pretty. I had to have them. Okay, but that's not, still that's not bad. Because I have a few other uh, things. Hold on just a moment. Let me pull my drawer. Uh, while everything else falls over. And a few other things. 
one thing I do is I, if it's really thick acetate, I try to save that because I will use that as a window in a memory album or a journal. But now I've got, and this is just what I found that I had forgot I had. All right, there's the tickets. There is Midnight Garden, Satan and Crystals. Santa Baby. Another Santa Baby. Where were these in Chris at Christmas time? I did not realize I had these. I have uh, more of the Poetic Rose. This is the Ephemera Pack. Um, this is not... No, this is Sheena. And, but they're stamps. I didn't realize I had these. Where were these at Christmas time? These are Zello Teal puppy stickers. And more Poetic Rose, the chipboard stickers. Okay. Now these I can put where they go or where they need to go now. Like this can go with Christmas. You know, the stamps can go in with my stamp binder. So I can put these. That's not a problem. The problem is here. Put these in my box. I fell in love with Prima's Flirty Flirty Fleur. Try saying that three times real fast. I love the paper. I love the patterns. I just think it is gorgeous. So I was anything I could find flirty floor I was getting. So I found the small journaling cards. I found the larger journaling cards. Not not bad. Then the only flowers I could find were these. So I got two packs of these. This was on purpose because of the wood cut. The wood cuttings. Although I don't know if it's chipboard or wood because I haven't opened them yet. But I knew I had two of these. What I didn't know was I ended up with two Satan crystals. This is Zello Teal, but I love the 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 um what are these rubber shapes? I think they're pretty. But those can go in because they're not Flirty Fleur. Then I found the ephemera packs. The ephemera pack. The ephemera pack. Not realizing that I already had these, I bought more. Why? Because I did not, I bought them and put them away and because they weren't where I knew where I usually keep them, I did not realize we, I had these. Now, the stickers. 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 Four packs. Think I got enough stickers? But wait, there's more. Shall we get into the chipboard stickers? Chipboard stickers. And chipboard stickers. And chipboard stickers. This is what happens when you don't know what you have. And, or you get so busy that you forget what you have and you see something in the store like, oh yeah, but I don't know if I have it or not. I'm going to get it. Yeah. And we all know that Prima is not cheap. And you've seen the few things that I got at Tuesday morning. So, yep. I think I finally need to do a memory album in the flirty flirt and use what I have and then take the rest and put, use it for other things but this is a problem and it's a problem that I have realized that I have so starting today and believe me I this isn't just it I have got book pages and and books let me set this one aside because 
in junk journaling, we buy books. Now, I've got seven, eight, eight that I've already gutted. And I thought, well, gee, you know, that, that'll keep me for a while. That should be enough. But in all the cleaning up, I found more books. And these aren't too bad. I mean, look at the difference. One, if I buy a book, I'm going to double check, make sure it's the kind of language it is. The, the difference in the papers, but it's a richness to the papers. And I like that. So these will end up getting gutted. I'll use the spines for junk journals and the inside papers for other things. But I love, I just, I love books. And you figure, okay, and they're nice sizes. But they're the size, sort of the size that we always use. Well, and this is something I bought intentionally. I bought three of them. And they're smaller books to do junk journals with. But look at the pages. This already has, you know, sort of the distressing around the edges. And that's going to be good. But the cover is padded. You know, put lace around that. And yes, this does have a page marker. And one thing I look for books when they, is if they get that little gap back there, you know they're going to be easy to take apart. So that's not going to be a problem. I may use this part to as an embellishment on a page, on a bookmark, or whatever. So even that does not get wasted. But then I have all these smaller pages to use. Then I've got this one. I just thought he was so cute. So what I'll end up doing is taking that part off and I may take the and cut these out because those would be so cute you know stuck spots or what for pages just love dogs and the inside look at all these cute pictures all oh, these are going to be wonderful I mean these are going to be so nice to use but on this one, you see, do that, and you can see the little, little hole there. So this is not going to be that hard to get out. This one here was a diff is a different matter. You see, I may use that part as a embellishment. I may. This would be nice just to um, decoupage. This has got a little insert in, a little part in here. You know, the pages aren't that aren't that large, but they do have the font on it. It's real interesting. But when you open it up, hold on just a moment. Okay, here you go. Here you go. more was wanting her treat it doesn't have that gap so you need to find a way to loosen that up and what I do is I take a simple paintbrush and I will work it in there and just slide it in to open that gap up and work it you know, just work it around like that and that will open it enough to where you can cut right along there and remove those pages without damaging anything but that oh and the feel of that book that is so nice so these were definite things that I did buy and did not forget about so these are going to you know part of my stash but from here on out you know, between lace and material and old book pages and, you know, all different kinds of copy-dyed copy papers, tea-dyed papers, you know, different colored dyed papers. I've got enough and in embellishments and buttons. Oh my gosh, buttons. 
I thought I had them all categorized. I'll put in my little bins. And then I find more. More buttons. And why I had them stuck in a little bag like this, I have no idea. But, yeah, all things that can be used. Now, when you have a button, let me show this one, that has the shank that's the same color as the insert, usually when you cut that shank off, that button will come out. Put your glue first in the center where, where you've cut it and then put it down because that will also help hold that center in. Just a tip. But, I mean, it's just... And there's a charm. So these are more things that, have, that I have to put away. But, I mean, and I've got a, two drawers of buttons. Why do I need to buy more buttons? I don't. So I'm putting myself on a spending freeze. I'm going to see how long I can go without having to buy anything else. I mean, even glue and tape. I have, yeah, I have a drawer full of glue. I have another drawer that's full of tape. I shouldn't need to buy any more for a while. So I'm going to see how long I can go without purchasing anything else. So, you're my witness. All of my subscribers I expect you to hold me to it. So we'll see. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Oh, on those bags, <coughs> I had taken one, and instead of, because usually, you know, it would be like that, because this is the edge of the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. Pardon me just a moment. Oh, that's better. Charlotte Peterson had done one where she poked out the sides, so I tried it. So, and then just, I mean, yeah, the bag was wonky to begin with. But now I've got, I've got a pocket here. And this can be glued right down into the journal. I've got a pocket here. And I've got a little tuck spot here. That is so neat. I love that idea. Thank you, Charlotte. So, now I've still got to find a place to put the last of this stuff. And have to get ready because we all know that July is the start of our, for crafters, the start of our Christmas as we start making stuff for Christmas in July because if not, we're not going to have it ready in time. And we still have that ahead of us this month. Uh, we've got, I still have three junk, four junk journals that we'll be working on, page at a time different things that, to, to try out and we'll be getting to that soon hopefully if I can find the rest of my desk because my desk starts uh, probably about two feet from here going that way and then it's probably another three feet going that way and then it's an L shape it's like an old army desk it's not like the last one I had. It was a huge what, 4 by 6 uh, huge like old teacher's desk. The big ones with the, with the drawers and the slide out panels on each side. I loved it but it would not fit in here so we had to get something smaller. So as soon as I get this cleaned up uh, we'll, be, we'll go start working in the journals. And maybe we'll even start a new memory album with all that flirty fleur collection. So all that's coming up. So I hope you come back to visit with us at the Dragon's Den. Have a blessed day. And stay safe. Please, during all this heat that we're having, please stay hydrated. Check on the elderly, your children. Check out, please don't leave your animals out in this type of weather. It is definitely not good for them. And if you take them for walks when it's really, really hot, try to do try to let them walk on the grass because concrete and asphalt is hot and it will burn their paws. Yeah, I saw there was an article in the paper where this lady was charged with animal 
they wanted to charge her with animal cruelty because the, she kept taking her dog for walks when it, in the, the heat of the day and the dog ended up where he couldn't walk because his pads had second degree burns. So be careful, stay safe, give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more to come, and I wish you all well. Bye.